Today we're going to be covering the best Python data structure you've never heard of, DEX. Over the next four minutes, we're going to be covering how these circular buffer multi-pointer data structures work and how you can use them to reduce time complexities, achieve better performance, and level up your Python skill set. Let's get started. A DEC is one of the many data structures available within the collection standard library. Essentially, they are double-ended lists, and at a first glance, they might look nearly identical to a native Python list. We can go ahead and create a DEC in a very similar way we would a list. In this case, we're going to store numbers 0 through 100,000. With a regular Python list, elements are stored sequentially in a single contiguous block of memory and has a single pointer that points to the very first element. Let's say we want to append an element to the end of the list. This can be done in constant time, also known as big O of 1, as the pointer points to the memory address of the first element, enabling us to use pointer arithmetic to find the last element where we can then append something new. A deck, on the other hand, being a double-ended list, has two pointers at each end. In this case, appending an element to a deck can also be done in constant time. We're going to be timing our approaches just to make sure that we see the results we expect, as they should have very similar runtimes. If you want to pop off the very last element, both structures can achieve this in constant time as well, as we only need to be aware of the memory address of the very last element, which can be done in the exact same way as with appending. As expected, we can still see very similar runtimes. If you're confused about why I'm popping the element off subsequently, it's because the time at magic will run this line multiple times, and I want to keep the size from drifting. The timing skew is unimportant, as we're only really concerned with the relative performance between the two data structures. Now let's see where decks can really shine. Let's say we want to insert an element into the very first position, also known as prepending. With the list, we would need to shift every element down to the subsequent memory address to make room for the new element being prepended. This results in a linear time complexity, also known as big O of n. A deck, on the other hand, can achieve this in constant time, as we can make use of the circular buffer. We can keep everything in place and move the first pointer to position negative 1, essentially wrapping it around. Even though the new element might be stored in a higher memory address under the hood, it is logically first in the deck. As we can see in this example, we are seeing results that are a thousand times faster. A similar thing will happen if you want to pop an element off of the left side. With a regular list, if you remove the first element, you'll need to shift each element down a spot to fill the gap, making this a linear time operation. Once again, this can be achieved in constant time with the deck, as we keep everything in place and merely increment the front pointer to point at the next element, as this is now the first element. Once again, we see a raw performance improvement of a thousand times in this case. The last thing to note is the behavior of insertion and deletion somewhere in the middle of the data structures. With the list, this will be a big O of n operation, while with a DQ, it will be a big O of n over 2 operation. As we now know, an insertion and deletion from the list spans from big O of n to big O of 1, depending on where we want to perform the operation, while the deck is big O of 1 at either side. If you want to insert something directly into the middle, both approaches would have a big O of n over 2 time complexity, as we would need to shift roughly half of the elements. Now let's keep in mind that big O is intended to measure the worst case. The worst case for a deck tends towards the middle at big O of n over 2, while the worst case for a list tends towards the front at big O of n. Feel free to share what data structure or Python concept you would like to see covered in the future, and I'll make a video on the top voted comment. Thanks for watching.